it's a profitable industry. It's a difficult industry, but it is profitable. It's done right. And I think that is why there are so many private companies that are involved in waste management. We all generate tons of trash every day without much thought to where it ultimately ends up. The United States alone creates over 267 million tons of waste annually, an immense volume that requires sophisticated systems to efficiently manage. Now, while dealing with such an enormous volume of trash was once seen simply as a necessary service to keep our cities clean, it has actually evolved into a major economic driver. Waste management is immensely profitable right now. For decades, a web of public and private waste haulers Landfill operators, recycling centers, and more now work together to handle our nation's trash, and in doing so, have created a huge business sector. What began as a necessary civic service to keep our communities clean and sanitary has since blossomed into a multi-billion dollar industry, employing hundreds of thousands of workers nationwide. I'm in a waste management business. This video will explore the multi-billion dollar trash industry, reveal cutting edge solutions for managing our garbage, and show how America is profiting off its own waste. I told them, you smell the trash and I smell money. So, what's the municipal waste system? A municipal waste system is basically like the trash department for your entire city. It oversees the garbage collection process to ensure all neighborhoods and communities are serviced regularly. Think of it as the management team that coordinates the fleet of garbage trucks you see driving through your streets each week. They handle contracting with private haulers, scheduling pickup routes, tracking volumes of waste, and making sure everything gets disposed of properly. While you go about your day, municipal waste systems are the behind-the-scenes organizers that allow cities and towns to function like a well-oiled machine, keeping trash from piling up while also generating revenue through collection contracts. So next time you wheel your bins to the curb, you have your local municipal waste system to thank for being the matchmaker between you and the haulers. Now that we know what municipal waste systems are, it's safe to say that it's not an easy system to manage. It's pretty incredible. It's a noisy, it's dirty, it's very unglamorous, but it's a fun place to be. We've seen how municipal waste systems handle the immense task of managing America's trash. At the ground level, these complex operations begin with individual collection agreements. Homeowners and landlords contract services through their city or town governments. Most municipalities then solicit competitive bids and award multi-year waste hauling contracts to private companies. To win neighborhood accounts, firms must propose a competitive service plan. This allows them to mobilize fleets that can include 20 or more garbage and recycling trucks. Collection vehicles are dispatched along tightly scheduled routes programmed into GPS. Drivers make 100 plus stops daily across residential routes, often multiple times per week. At each home or business, waste is hydraulically dumped into the truck's compacting container. Once full, the trucks return to transfer stations where loads are further condensed. While servicing residential neighborhoods under municipal contracts is a major pillar of these companies' businesses. It's not their only source of income. Commercial and industrial waste collection represents another significant slice of revenue. Just think about how much trash office buildings, retailers, manufacturers, and other commercial enterprises accumulate every day. These organizations often generate far greater volumes than households. There are also specialized collection services for industrial sites producing unique waste streams. Some examples include construction debris removal, medical waste handling from hospitals and clinics, or grease trap pumping for restaurants. Whether it's standard trash pickup or these specialized services, Commercial and industrial waste collection allows haulers to diversify their customer base beyond solely relying on municipal residential accounts. Through servicing both the residential and commercial sectors, the billions generated from collection contracts have transformed how cities manage trash. It's become big business supporting thousands of local jobs as drivers, operators, dispatchers, and more. Now that we've explored how waste is collected from neighborhoods, businesses, and industries across the country, let's discuss what ultimately happens to the huge volumes of trash being amassed. After haulers transport collected waste from transfer stations, well over 90% of America's 267 million annual tons ends up in centralized landfills. These facilities, operated by large disposal corporations, represent the final destination for the majority of municipal solid waste. Uh, everybody you pass on the street, everybody you have any come in contact with, is potentially one of our customers. Landfill companies operate many sites around the country, 
they choose places near cities so trash trucks don't have to travel too far. Each landfill site can be 500 acres big. That's like 500 football fields. The trash gets buried inside the landfill in special sections called cells. These cells have plastic lining and drainage pipes to collect garbage juice as the trash breaks down. Each cell can hold a decade's worth of waste before it's full. As collection trucks arrive daily with new loads of trash, they weigh in at onboard scales, and then they unload their trash onto the active part of the landfill called the working face. There, bulldozers push and compact the trash down tightly into the cell. Here's a fun fact for you to know. Tipping fees at municipal solid waste landfills range from $30 to $80 per ton on average, generating hundreds of millions in annual revenue. Larger construction and demolition debris sites may charge $20 to $60 per ton. On average, each person in the U.S. generates over 4.5 pounds of trash every day that ends up buried in landfills, adding up to 1.7 million pounds per person over a lifetime. I don't even want to do the math, but off the top of my head, that's billions of dollars. Over time, the landfills get really big, holding over 20 million tons of squished down trash. Some landfills will hold trash for 30 to 50 years before being full. For the privilege of depositing waste at their landfills, operators charge per ton tipping fees that generate substantial revenues. But these companies are also pioneering innovative ways to extract further value from trash through new technologies. Many capture methane, a potent greenhouse gas naturally emitted during decomposition. This biomass fuel is then processed into renewable natural gas or used to generate electricity in on-site power plants. Organic materials in landfills decompose, they produce methane, a very potent greenhouse gas. Some cutting-edge landfills are even experimenting with plasma gasification to convert non-recyclable refuse into synthetic fuels and chemicals. Solid waste, plastic, paper, cardboard, there's a lot of energy within those, carbon and hydrogen. Why don't you do something useful with it? With hundreds of millions of tons of municipal solid waste accumulating annually in the elaborate network of collection routes and landfill disposal sites, it's remarkable that any materials are actually recovered and returned to productive use. However, one area showing great promise is plastics recycling. As most consumers are aware by now, plastics have overwhelmed our waste streams and persisted virtually unchanged in landfills for decades. But forward-thinking manufacturing firms are capitalizing on this abundant stockpile of recycled feedstock by reprocessing plastics into new products. Recycled plastic, it's important because the nature of the materials, they can be used infinitely. And you can remake them and remake them. You never ever have to throw these materials away. Just a fraction of the 25 billion pounds of plastic generated yearly in the U.S. is currently recycled. However, recycling companies are working hard to tip those scales by actively processing collected plastics through state-of-the-art facilities. There, mixed plastics are cleaned, shredded, and melted before being extruded as recycled plastic pellets or fibers ready for resale to remanufacturers. Various industries from automotive to construction purchase these recycled plastic commodities for integration into new durable goods like carpet fibers, polyester clothing, and even pavement materials. As recycling technology and consumer practices continue improving combined plastic streams purity, the potential grows for plastics recycled endlessly. In closed-loop manufacturing systems, truly waste can become raw material, a reality bringing both environmental and economic benefits. As we've explored the vast interconnected systems that have emerged to manage America's enormous waste streams, one might assume this complex industry has waste management firmly under control. However, looking ahead, projections show the challenges facing the waste sector will only intensify in the coming decades without intervention and innovation. If current production and consumption patterns continue unchecked globally, the world's total waste generation is forecast to increase 67% by 2050 to approximately 3.4 billion tons per year. And by the year 2050, the amount of rubbish generated annually is expected to increase to 3.4 billion tons. As the rubbish piles up, no number of landfills and recycling programs can keep pace with this growing problem. Such growth would further strain existing landfill capacity and processing infrastructure around the world. While waste may traditionally be seen as a burden on society and the environment, it is remarkable to consider the vast economic engine that has emerged through the efforts involved in collection, 
processing, and disposal. The complex infrastructure and workforce managing America's waste resources daily represents big business driving significant contributions to GDP. It is estimated that the waste management industry as a whole contributes well over $55 billion annually to the U.S. economy. Digging deeper into this figure, we find over 500,000 direct jobs have been generated across its many domains, from municipal collection crews and landfill operations to specialized recycling facilities and remanufacturing enterprises. Jobs have been created at all skill levels to help transport, process, and prepare discarded materials for beneficial applications. The waste management industry supports many other companies and jobs beyond just the people it directly employs. When landfills, recycling plants, and trash pickup services spend money, it helps other businesses too. For example, power plants that burn trash to make electricity need to buy fuel and fix their equipment. This means more jobs at fuel companies and machine shops. Cities hiring private companies to collect trash gives those haulers steady money to pay their own workers. As recycling expands, the companies that process recyclables into new products do better too. They buy more from supplier companies and hire more employees to turn items like plastic and metal into new things. All these extra jobs and industries getting business from waste management means the positive effects ripple out widely. It's not just the 500,000 people directly working in trash pickup and landfills. Many other companies benefit as well. This makes the industry important to the whole economy. That's it for today's video. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Your support helps us reach more people with our content. Thanks for watching and consider watching our other videos right here.